It's that time of year where your garden's probably starting to look something like this, very barren. And one really hotly debated topic when it comes to actually shutting down the garden is your mulch. Do you leave it in place? Do you remove it? Should you maybe add to it? The wrong move, and you can end up with major disease issues, pest issues, frozen plant roots, a slower warm-up in the spring, meaning a slower start to the gardening season. Literally, the choices are endless. So today's video, we're going to navigate whether or not you should leave your mulch in place, if you should add to your mulch, or if you should just remove it entirely. Let's get into it. Number one reason is obviously for insulation and for retaining some heat. Now, this is best served when it comes to things like perennials. Now, outside of the obvious benefit is actually the ability for it to weigh down your plants. This is particularly true for newly planted bulbs or perennials, whether it's the entire root bulb or a single bulb, such as like garlic, from being pushed out of the soil. This is what we call frost heating. And frost heating happens when the plant essentially doesn't have the equivalent of a weighted blanket, except for hopefully your mulch doesn't cost $200 like a weighted blanket does on Etsy. What this means is that you can leave your existing mulch in place and you may choose to actually add two to three more inches of mulch, ideally something like shredded leaves or shredded straw, not something chunky like wood bark or rubber tires, for example. I know they're very commonly used for decorative purposes in perennial gardens, but they're not necessarily a good thing when it comes to preventing that frost heaving where the perennial pushes its way out of the ground. Now, one of the reasons why you may choose to remove mulch is if you have tomatoes. So you guys know this is where I plant my tomatoes. And blight is a great example of something that could be overwintered in mulch. It doesn't necessarily have to be bacterial. It could be fungal. It could be insects. If you have a problem in your system, particularly a problem that revolves around being overwintered in mulch or in soil, you may actually choose to expose your soil to the elements. Now, what this may mean is just leaving it and allowing the snow to fall as it might. And then the coolness of just in general of your area being kind of that killer or that neutralizer when it comes to disease and pests. Or your other choice may be to actually actively remove snow soil from that bed in hopes of exposing that soil even more, just laying down a piece of poly and then constantly shoveling it off in hopes of, again, exposing it to that really intense cold to kind of nuke what is there. I've recommended this more times than not when it comes to things like the blight. Sclerotinia is another example of this. Any sort of like slugs or snails, flea beetles, all of these things can be maybe not neutralized or removed entirely, but they definitely can be slowed down by exposing your soil directly to the cold. Now, your next choice actually may have nothing to do with heaving. It may have nothing to do with disease or pests. It actually may have everything to do with how soon you want to be able to get into the garden. And if this is your goal, then your choice of mulch is actually what's going to be key. Now, the utilization of things like shredded leaves or straw can act as an insulator. But this insulator eventually will translate into an insulator for cold, meaning that area is likely to take longer to thaw out and warm up. Because your soil, which is black, is not exposed to the light, meaning it's not able to collect as much heat. Not only that, but the mulch itself can make ice blocks and ice dams, which in turn also take time to melt. All of these things delay your time for getting into the actual physical garden. Now, the alternative to that is if you do expose it entirely, you're exposing your soil to things like erosion through wind and water, et cetera, and so forth. And it may not necessarily speed things up that much. But one choice you could make is actually to place down some poly mulch. Now, this is literally just polyplastic, stuff that you would use when you're painting walls. It's not necessarily meant for gardens, but utilizing that on the soil surface and trying to get it as flush with the soil surface as possible, utilizing things like bricks, rocks, two by fours, tires, whatever the case is, can actually help not only to neutralize disease and bugs and pests, but it also can be utilized in the spring to help warm things up faster. Now, interestingly enough, if you go this route, you will notice one thing. You will notice an explosion of weed growth earlier in the season. These weeds, when they do explode, are going to be leggy 
and they're going to be very sick. We want to leave everything in place. We want them to be sick and we want them to die. So once we remove that poly, we're going to have warm soil that has its first kind of round of weed seeds completely nuked out of it due to less than ideal planting conditions. You are off to the races. Keep in mind, you do not want to do this if you have bulbs or perennials planted. You have trees, shrubs, anything that's already existing. If it is not just raw soil that's used for annual planting, do not do this method because you will kill any other plant that is in that area as well. So here are some of the most common issues or myths when it comes to actually utilizing mulch in the garden, particularly when it comes to adding it or removing it. Mulch that is too thick and matted or too heavy and kind of weighed down due to it being finer in nature, such as shredded leaves or heavily shredded straw, can actually make for anaerobic areas or icky areas, if you will, particularly in depressions. So we want to watch that leaf litter layer and ensure that it's not becoming too heavy, too matted, and it doesn't appear so it's storing too much water. If that is the case, I actually encourage you to remove that mulch from that system, put it into the compost, particularly if it doesn't have a disease or a pest issue, because that is absolute gold when it comes to compost stuff. And then Put on some new fluffier mulch, if you will. This will have a whole new added level of protection against cold and it will look visually much more appealing and your plants will have less competition or less to push through when it comes to seed starting in particular next spring. Number two is voles. So if you have hosted a vole Airbnb in the past, it likely is something to do with mulch. The mulch added in the fall is insulating and protecting. And it insulates and protects not only against the cold, but it insulates and protects against predators, which is what voles need to thrive and survive. So if you have a vole issue or some sort of rodent issue, removal of mulch is going to be key and not re-adding it is also going to be hugely important. And if you've ever had voles, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to protect the soil in a vole air and B scenario, you can just utilize like the poly, for example. They don't tend to like that as much because it's obviously very see-through and predators can very obviously see them. They know that. Or simply the application mulch you do apply should be lighter in nature. It shouldn't be two to three inches thick. It should be a relatively thin layer on top. For me personally, I do remove mulch on a lot of the beds, but I do leave some in place at the same time. My perennial beds, for example, I always leave it in place and I just add to it over time. This year, I've had a little bit of a nightmare when it comes to flea beetles in particular. So I am removing the mulch from a lot of the beds. And the only annual beds that I'm leaving mulch in, well, actually just putting fresh mulch in, I'm not leaving mulch in, putting fresh mulch into is going to be the ones that I'm putting my garlic into and my peas as well, my pea seeds. Other than that, we're going mulchless. We're going naked for the winter time. As naked as we can be anyways. Get curious, let me know in the comments down below what you do, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.